Hey everyone, it's Mark from Vintage Stuff, and today I'm going to talk to you about fans by the Patton Electric Company. We're going to do some examination of the build quality of these fans and how it has changed over time based on some reverse engineering techniques and some online research. I'm going to give you a brief rundown of my troubleshooting methods for these two fans in particular, and then we'll cover the motor repair that I'm doing. If you find this video helpful, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. So let's get started. So let's start with the smaller unit on the left. Here's the model information. Model U2-1487, uh, made by the Macmillan Electric Company. Uh, it's a 14-inch fan. Uh, this one was manufactured in October of 1998. So I picked this one up off the curb from a neighbor last summer. Uh, because the heavy-duty metal cage construction hinted it may be a quality unit that was worth salvaging. Uh, even more telling that this was a quality unit was the metal fan blade, because you won't find a metal fan blade on any consumer fan anymore because they cost too much to manufacture. Fans are pretty simple devices, and their most common failure is dry bearings, which cause them to squeal loudly, slow down, or even seize up entirely. When I plugged this unit in, it did start running slowly, but then it shot a spark out of the motor and tripped the GFCI, out, GFCI outlet I had, so I knew there was a significant motor fault. So I opened up the motor, and as you might be able to see from this motor winding, the stator is discolored on that top one from what appears to be overheating. Let's see, if you look really closely... I could focus this in. Right there, you can see one of the wires is actually broken off. Um, so that likely shorted to the stator frame. So I consider that motor beyond repair. Um, so if we look at the rest of the motor here, bolts off. There's nothing particularly noteworthy about this motor. The standard armature, sleeve bearings, not too different from what you might find in a mop modern budget box fan motor. Um, so this motor was manufactured by Macmillan Electric and my guess is the motor was outsourced as a cost savings effort. I was able to track down a replacement based on the part number but it cost nearly $150. Clearly this fan is not cost effective to repair. But I decided to hold on to it in case I came across a working motor for a more reasonable cost. So enter the fan on the right. Here's the model information. Focus this in. It's HFV-18SEP. Here's some of the motor statistics. Model U2-1887, and this one was manufactured in 1988, from the looks of things. So I picked this one up at a local estate sale at the very last hour of the sale. It was originally marked as being 15, but being the second day of the sale, it's usually half off, and without even asking, they said they'd write it up for $5. The plug was originally cut off. This is what it looked like, just the wire strands. So I couldn't test it, so I knew I was taking a gamble. Um, the switch was also pretty mangled up. Um, so it looks like as the knob fell off and the owner had been turning the switch with pliers. So I hooked these loose end wire, wire ends up to my tester here that I built. It's got plugs that you can screw the wire onto. 
And it did work, but the bearings were dry, and it was intermittently singing the song of their people. So at that point, I've already moved to the good. So at this point, I've already moved the good switch in the cord over from the first unit to this one. What I found interesting is the older unit originally just had a two-prong cord, despite the fan's all-metal construction. The newer fan's cord's grounded, but despite that, the older frame actually still had the provision for the ground, which I found was very interesting. So now let's take a closer look at this motor. For starters, it's quite hefty, so that's generally a good sign that it's good quality, especially when you compare it to this newer unit. You can see how many fewer windings there are. So when I took it apart, the first thing I noticed was that the screws had been over torqued at the factory. Let's see if I can get this to focus in for you. There you go. You can see it's stripped out right in there. So I knew that was done at the factory because it still had the factory thread lock on it. So then when I opened up the motor, I found the rear plastic spacer had broken into pieces. That's what's all over here. So I'm not certain if that happened during disassembly or not, but I suspect it was a pre-existing problem. Um, the bearing races on this fan are interesting. They are sleeve bearings, but they have a large protective cup around them. see inside there there we go so to me they look to be an early design of a permanently lubricated bearing uh, what I was expecting to find these cups to be filled with either grease or felt material to retain oil but what I encountered was more of a chunky sawdust that I ended up scraping out. So I'm a bit, I'm a bit torn on what the best lubrication strategy is um, I should use for this design. I've considered packing the, uh, the cup with bearing grease, but I don't know if that will end up being too thick and give the motor trouble starting, or whether the grease will leak out in warm temperatures and make a mess. I think my approach is I'm going to start with a light lubrication to start, and solicit recommendation, recommendations in the comments for a future need to further lubricate the bearings. Now let's move on to the spacer repair. Although the first in spacer was still intact, that's this one, it is pretty br brittle. You can might be able to see here, it chips just a little when I was gently prying it off. So I decided to replace it at the same time. On this unit, the motor shaft's half inch, so I was able to source some nylon spacers at Lowe's. Um, I used some calipers to det determine the correct length of them and then ground them down on my bench grinder. So I want to point out a couple things about this armature here. First, look at these grooves where the spacer goes. So it looks to be like this armature was specifically designed so that the spacer remains stationary on the shaft. Um, because if the spacer were to spin on the shaft, that would generate noise. Alright, so we have our new uh, spacers epoxied to the armature. And we're going to add back our individual washer spacers to each end. Um, one interesting thing on this is I noted there's several more washer spacers that go on the back of this uh, particular unit. Uh, I'm not sure if this was a design at the factory for um, pulling in more oil out of the bearing cup or if this was a way to um, adjust for tolerances based on a fan motor by motor basis. Um, but we're going to put it back together so it had the same spacing as originally. And what I decided to use is I'm going to use a light coating of bearing grease on the shaft and on these spacers. And we're going to see how that works. Um, I still would very much like to hear everyone's opinions if I should fill those bearing cups with grease. Um, I'm thinking that might be a good idea for a long term, but I have a feeling that this, just a light coating on these bear, on these, on the shaft here, will probably make it run for a year or two before it needs to be relubricated. 
Uh, on a smaller fan, I'd probably use something like closer to a 3-in-1 oil. I think this motor is big enough that just a light coating of the heavy-duty bearing grease is going to be fine. So let's get to this. I'm going to put a light coating on each one of these. Putting on the shaft here. A few times. Pull it back out. Add another light coating. We do the same for the front. manually to distribute the grease. the house together. Spin it around. Right, as you can see, there's just a tiny bit of play back and forth. And that's exactly what we want. We don't want it too tight because then it don't want it won't want to spin. And if it's too loose, that's not good either. And you're not probably not going to be able to see it in here, but the the armature is perfectly centered on the stator. We've got some replacement screws here. We're gonna. 
this back together and see how it runs. Alright, so I got the fan screwed back together and back in the cage. I'm going to hook up the wires. Um, wiring diagram, I thought I'd share that. Um, black, which corner of the top is high, goes to number one. And these are just press fit connectors. And let's see. Number two is blue, which is medium speed. And then red, which is low, goes to number three. And then white goes to the line. Alright, so before we actually turn this on, let's do a quick safety check to make sure it's not going to electrocute us. Uh, so I stuck one probe in just to the, stuck it in the metal grill, and we're going to touch it to the ground, and this should read zero on the meter. Show that it is grounded correctly. And then, let's see if we can actually show that on the screen here and when we touch it to either of the other leads the hot or the neutral we're gonna flip the switch to all the different settings and it should not read anything we'll do it with the other prong Alright, so the motor is safe, it's not going to electrocute us, let's uh, plug it in and try it. Alright, so we're plugged in. Sounds like it's working. Let's put a, uh, the fan blade back on and give it another whirl. Alright, so I got the blade back on and I put the cover on. It's kind of annoying to put back on so I didn't want to have to show that on the video. Um, and we're going to fire it up. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be super loud. Uh, so I'm just going to say thank you for watching everyone.